Hi, welcome to the third video of section 2. In the previous video, we learnt about HTTP requests. In this video, we're going to start to write Python code to perform HTTP requests using the requests library. First, we're going to do a quick introduction to requests library. Then, we're going to write our first script to perform a GET request. We're going to see how to access the response headers, perform a head request, and finally, how to perform a POST request using Python and requests library. Requests is an Apache 2 licensed HTTP library written in Python. It was created to reduce the complexity and work needed when using URL lib2 and other HTTP libraries available at the moment. On the left side, we can see an example of the code needed to perform a request to api.github.com using authentication when using URL lib2 library. On the right, we can see the same function but using requests library. The simplicity is pretty evident. It really facilitates our job when coding scripts. Let's start programming in Python. In this first example, we're going to perform a GET request using Python and requests library. Let's open the Atom editor in Virtual Machine and create a new file. We are going to import the requests library to start with. Now we create a variable r where we're going to instantiate a requests object. With the method get and target URL in this case is http bin.org slash ip. Finally, we print the content of the response using r.txt. Save the file in examples section 2 folder as video3.py. Let's run it on the terminal. Open the terminal and change directory to example section 2. And we run it with python video3.py. We can see the response body here. Where we can see again is my IP. Remember that slash IP returns in the body the caller IP. That's it. That was our first script using request library. Congratulations. You are communicating with the web application using Python. Now let's add a query string in the get request. In order to do so, we're going to add a variable called payload. With a dictionary where each key is the parameter name and the value will be the value of that parameter. In this case, the parameter is URL and the value will be http colon slash slash www.edge-security.com. Then we are going to change the resource to slash redirect dash two instead of IP. This resource is expecting a parameter URL with a valid URL, which is going to redirect us. We also need to add the payload as a value for params in the request. Params equals payload. We now save it. If we run the script, we will see the content of the redirected page in the terminal. Python video3.py There you go. Here we have all the content of www.edge-security.com in the terminal. That is how we add parameters to the query string. What if we want to see the return code from the server? We need to add the following code. Let's print some title by typing print status code. Then we can print some formatting and to get the code r.status underscore code. We can remove the print r.text to obtain a cleaner response. We save it and let's run it in the terminal with Python and the name of the script. We can see as result the status 200, meaning the request was valid. We are now going to see how to get access to the headers of the response. We go back to the editor in the virtual machine 
and we open the file video-3-header.py that is ready to save some typing. This script is using the resource slash IP again. In order to access the response headers, we use the method headers of the request object. In order to print them line by line, we can do a loop and unpack the key and values from the r.headers colon. Let's try and run it in the terminal. We Python and the script file name. You can see the different headers returned by the server, plus the response code and the response body content. What if we want to request only the headers to save bandwidth and accelerate the rec response transaction times? We go back to the editor and we change the get method by the head method. We save the script. We move to the console and run it. We can see the status code being 200. And we are getting back the headers, but we don't have the response body content anymore. This is because the method used is head, and we only get the headers from the server. Now, we are going to see how to set the headers of a request. Why would we want to do that? Because we may need to add a custom headers expected by the application. We want to fake our user agent to trick the server into thinking that we are a mobile device. We may want to change the host header to trick the server or load balancers. Or we may want to brute force or tamper with a header value and see how the application handles it. Let's try to set a header. We go back to the script in the editor. We're going to modify the request, changing the method back to get and the resource from IP to headers. This will make HTTP bin.org to send us back the client headers they receive in the body of the response for debugging purposes. We save it and we run it. We can see that the user agent that requests library sends with every request is python requests. Now let's go back to the editor and let's set the user agent header to a random test value. We need to add a dictionary called my headers with a key name user agent and the test value iPhone 6. My headers equals open curly braces apostrophe user dash agent apostrophe colon apostrophe iPhone 6 apostrophe close curly braces. We also need to add the request a parameter called headers with the value my headers. Let's run it again in the console. Great! We see that the server received our modified user agent, faking we are an iPhone 6. Fantastic! Now you know how to manipulate headers. Now that we saw a get and a head request, let's do a post request, where we're going to send the form parameters. Go back to the Atom editor and we change the method get by post. We also change the URL. This time, we're going to use the post resource, http binorg slash post, and we add the data dictionary. This is typically the form data you see in a web application. In this case, we add one parameter in a data dictionary with a key called name and the value packed. We save it and then we run the script in the console. Perfect. We can see in the results that we have the dictionary form with the values we have submitted. Congratulations. You now know how to perform different HTTP requests using Python. In this video, we have seen how to use the request library to perform get, host, and post requests that will be the foundation of the following scripts. In the next video, we're going to analyze the HTTP responses and learn the different groups of return codes.